We're going to start by looking at connections. This section is all about setting up the essential configurations that will allow you to receive alarm events via either IP or serial connections. For more detailed information on these configurations, you can refer to Infotech 207 for IP connections and Infotech 208 for serial connections. Whenever you need to configure connections like these, you'll need to access the desktop security suite with an administrator user to modify the system settings. Once you're in the administrator module, navigate to the system configuration and locate the IP connections option. Here, you'll see the IEP reader services. These services run continuously on your server, monitoring incoming events and signals, and transferring them to the SoftGuard platform. When handling both IP and serial connections, we recommend using two distinct services, one to manage all IP-based connections and another to handle the serial connections. Additionally, it's a good practice to segment the IP connections between UDP TCP and TCP client connections. To view or create a connection, double-click on any of the existing connections and a new window will pop up. In this window, you'll see all the active connections along with the option to create a new one. To add a new connection, click on New Connection, assign a unique name, and designate a port. Important reminder, opening ports is something your IT team needs to handle. While our team is here to help you manage and administer the platform and its connections, determining which ports are available and actually opening them must be done locally by your IT team. When setting up IP connections, you'll need to input the port that's assigned to your network. Remember, this port must be open for the connection to work properly. For serial connections, like those used with hardware receivers, for example, a Surgard System 3, you'll need to specify the COM port where the serial receiver is connected. Next, the status of the connection should always remain enabled. As for the other fields, we'll leave those with the default settings for now. You'll also need to assign one or more dealers to this connection and this port. Assigning a dealer ensures that any devices pointing to the designated port will only be able to access the account numbers within the dealers you've specifically allowed them to view. For example, if you assign three dealers to a connection, any alarm event coming through this port will only check accounts among those three dealers. Key consideration. If you create a single connection for multiple dealers, all pointing to the same port, you must ensure that each dealer has a unique range of account numbers. For instance, dealer one uses accounts one to thousand. Dealer two uses accounts 1001 to 2000. Dealer three uses accounts 2001 to 3000. This is crucial because if two dealers share the same account numbers on a single connection, it will cause conflicts in the system. However, if you assign just one dealer to the connection, it's possible to repeat account numbers across different dealers without issue. You could also enable different ports for each dealer. For instance, port 9095 for dealer 1, port 9096 for dealer 2, port 9097 for dealer 3. This way, you can use the same account numbers for multiple dealers since they're coming through different ports, avoiding conflicts altogether. If the connection resolves events by IMEI, as is common with GPS tracking devices and certain alarm panels, you don't need to worry about account numbers. IMEI is a unique identifier for each device and thus won't conflict across different dealers, even if they're using the same port. When configuring a serial receiver, you'll need to assign both the COM port and the dealers that will receive events through it. Since only one serial port is available, all dealers that need to receive events must be assigned to that same port. If you want to create subdivisions, 
navigate to the Port Assignment tab. There, you'll see a list of all your assigned dealers. Simply double-click on a dealer, and you'll be able to view the specific receiver lines available for that dealer to receive events. For example, let's say your surrogate receiver has 32 lines for receiving events. Depending on your setup, you might instruct one dealer to point all their alarm panels to just the first three lines. In this case, the remaining lines won't be necessary for that dealer. Select the lines that will be available for each dealer based on how you've decided to manage your phone lines. If you want to assign all lines to all dealers, that's totally fine. Just remember to avoid duplicating account numbers and assign different account ranges to each dealer as overlapping account numbers could lead to conflicts in the system. Within our service, when you open an existing connection, you'll find the inactivity time field. This value is set in minutes and determines the period after which inactivity is monitored. If this time limit is reached without any activity from the receiver, an event will be triggered on the operator screen. This event is logged under an internal system account, not a customer account, notifying that there is an inactivity issue in this receiver. So, to recap, we've covered how to create an IP connection and how to assign one or more ports depending on whether you are working with one or multiple dealers. We also went over how to set up a serial connection and, from the Port Assignment tab, how to assign specific receiver lines to each dealer within that serial connection. Once you've completed these configurations, always click the Restart button. This will reset the service and activate the new connection you've just created.